So I was wondering what a group like Family First makes of the last uh, week or two and the signals that have been given and the policy announcements that have got uh, our snowflake media so, so upset and, and so uh, cognitively dissonant. So we're joined now by a, a board member, I think, or director of the Family First group, uh, Sue Reid. Sue, uh, welcome to the platform. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Hello, Sean. Yes, I'm a board member, yes. Yeah. So uh, is Family First encouraged by what it has seen in the coalition agreements and the noises, if you like, or, or the signals being sent out by this new government? Yeah, well, we've actually lobbied um, for a lot of those issues over the years. And sometimes, a lot of the time, we've actually been a lone voice um, speaking out on, on uh, a lot of those things, especially uh, when it comes to, um, you know, the gender, sexuality, education in schools, for example. Um, so that we've lobbied for those and, uh, and, and been that lone voice in the wilderness. And so I guess it was... No government will be perfect... But I tell you what, I felt very positive, um, and I hadn't felt like that in a very long time, very positive about our leadership direction. And you're right, a lot of that detail was encouraging. They had a lot of issues that they covered, and they had a plan. They had a narrative, they had a plan, and they had a minister dedicated or an associate minister, groups of people working together, ministers working together, to because if we if we really are honest about, we've got a lot to a lot to roll back. We've got a lot of work to do. Um, so no wonder the Jessica and the Jenna show are so exercised and they're just feral. That there's change afoot. Mm. Um, and you believe it? You believe this is change afoot? This isn't just pandering um, to no, groups quite, like yours. It's, it's not lip service. Yeah, it's quite it's quite um, serious. It's um, they've committed um, uh, ministers to deal with it, um, and they've um, they've got the ministers on board. And so when you have ministers on board, that's from the top down. People could get away uh, policy advisors and these think tanks and the, the groups that the last government set up. They could get away with it because they had the government funding and they had someone at the top was giving that issue out to out. And, and so it went from the top down. Yeah. So now we're going to see change from the top down and that will be, that will be, um, that, well, the shaking the boots, I guess. Yeah. So what, what to Family First Minds are the most important changes that have been announced? Um, probably the um, change to RSE, the Relationship and Sexuality Education in Schools, was quite specific um, and it was between New Zealand First and um, the National Government. Um, so I think to see that actually roll out and to actually happen, it isn't just lip service. I think that they have a real opportunity here to stop the government funding, to um, get groups like Inside Out, the arm of Rainbow Youth, um, family planning with their program, The Journey, um, or Mates and Dates, which was introduced under the guise of anti-bullying. So if you get these groups um, to go and survive like any other charity um, that's pushing a view, um, like us, we... we mm. We don't get any government funding and we enjoy significant funds to do what we do because people mm. believe what we do. Much of the funding uh, of those groups, do. though, was done through a quite complex way of government slush funds being assigned to charities uh, through politically motivated boards and, and trustees that allowed those groups to escape true public scrutiny for the work they did. And then, of course, they'd survive largely on getting government contracts um, for their charities yeah. to provide government services. It was quite a complex and clever way to enforce cultural change at the taxpayer's, offense, uh, uh, the taxpayer's expense without any accountability. Uh, yes, quite opportunistic. And, um, yes, ways they knew how to set it all up, um, uh, with, like a smoke screen with, with charitable status or... or uh, um, to and, and apply for that go, uh, taxpayer funding, mm. so our taxpayer dollars um, going into this. So, um, you know, it, if you stop the, the taxpayer dollars to these mm. groups, then, um, 
you know the the company this i don't think the schools will um will have those programs because they have to pay for it themselves so if companies or schools uh, want their indoctrination and their agenda they can pay for it yeah. um, themselves and it means that they won't want to yeah. so that's um that's really positive i think that that's really doable and achievable and i can see that happening yeah okay that's as far as the government sector goes the public sector goes the fact is the lot of wokeism and the wave of wokeism that, that swept over this country is also driven by corporates uh, through ESG scores, ESG management systems. And a government really can't change that. Or do you think the whole mood, the whole atmosphere of the culture wars will be altered by this? I think we've reached a tipping point. Um, so... With corporates or banks, we can vote with our feet, um, but with schools, that's taxpayer dollars. Um, yeah. And there's significantly less in the coffers um, since that last Labor Fest. Um, but Bob has been packing halls around the country, venues, hundreds of families um, concerned. And, of course, you won't see the, the Jessica and Jenna's, um, you know, reporting on that. Yeah. Um, but Bob's been out there with... And people... He hasn't asked to go there. People have asked him to go, Family First, to go and um, uh, give parents um, and families the tools to be able to um, stand in amongst this. I call it a tsunami of culture. Mm. It's a tsunami that's come in. And teach them to stand and, and to uh, equip them to stand because they really are concerned. At the end of the day, they, they're just um, family-minded people that want the best for their kids. They actually want a good education for their kids. They don't want it swamped with this, um, um, you know, teachers challenging sexual norms and challenging homophobia and transphobia. They actually just want to, to um, have their kids read and write and have numeracy and literacy skills. And mm. um, so Bob's been going out and, and filling venues. And yeah. so those, I think that's the part of the pushback. Not only just gender and sexuality and is, is part of the wokeism, that... Um, whole of what the, what Family First does, there's a whole range of fact sheets and they can be on our website, um, mm. familyfirst.org. So they're tools and there is pushback. And we, mm. I called it a tipping point election yeah. and people had had enough and they showed, yeah. they clearly... But geez, the mainstream media wouldn't tell you that. They'd tell you that everyone's up in arms about these changes and it's undemocratic and it's the wrong election outcome and they're all writing teeth-gnashing, pearl-clutching articles about how terrible it all is and we've got a racist government. 